Hello everybody, welcome to another Yukon Bob video back on the sea dew for the very first time since 2021. I think last October was the last time that I was out, so uh, took a little longer than normal to get organized this morning to make sure I had all the right gear and the camera gear and the extra batteries and everything was hooked up right. So we're on our way on the highway now. It should take me about 50 minutes to get up to uh, Lake uh, Simcoe, which is north of me. First ride in the water to test it out, make sure everything's working okay. Didn't want to go too, too far away on the first one. I'm going to launch from a new boat launch this time up there called um, Sybilt. It's in Sybilt Provincial Park. Uh, apparently it's free Monday to Thursday, so i going to find out if that's all true. I was up on the motorbike a few days ago and just pulled in there and talked to the lady. She said, yeah, it's free Monday to Thursday. Decided not to go out on the weekend, even though it was pretty nice because today's a Monday, just because I knew it was going to be a zoo out there. And on Facebook, I heard lineups of 30, 45 minutes to get your boat out of the water, stuff like that. And so I thought, you know what, I'll just wait till Monday because the weather conditions are good again today, light winds. So we're going to see you up at uh, Sybilt in just a little bit. We'll get the sea dew in the water, go for a ride and see where we wind up today. Okay, let's go down and have a look at uh, the actual boat launch here at Sybilt. It's not too busy today. When I was here a couple of days ago on the motorbike over the weekend, it was just packed in here, but today it's not bad at all. This is a pretty good launch, I think. Let's take a look down here. Big wide launch. You can launch about seven boats at a time out of here. Okay, the pad goes back to about there and then drops off a little bit. I don't have to get too much deeper than that. The only thing about here is it doesn't look like there's a great area for tying up a like a sea dew because there's no sideboards on the end of those docks or on the sides of the docks. So it's going to mean that, uh, you know, the, the boat's going to have to just sort of hang off the edge and has a chance of slipping under the dock. But we'll just be careful. Maybe just park it up on the shore over there or something like that or on the grass right over there. It should be okay. Okay, let's get it ready to go. Okay, so we just left the sea dew right up on the shore because there is no place to really tie it to that well, so I just left it right there, it's fine. Gotta tell you that the water's a little bit cold. It's not that warm right now. Wouldn't want to be in there. It's gonna take a few weeks for that to start warming up. Now, most important thing, put the keys away so that you know where they are. Okay, keys in there. That in there. Let's put that there. I'm bringing the ski jacket just in case it's cold out there because I know from past experience that it seems warm here on the shore, but to get out on the water, it can be fairly cold. So I'm bringing it along anyway. Okay, we'll get the life jacket on, start it up and let's go. Okay, like a charm, first time this year. Fired right up. All right, so what is the plan for today? I think what we're gonna do is just uh, Kind of check all the systems on the sea to make everything is make sure everything is working okay. The Garmin GPS, the Navionics uh, mapping off the iPhone, all that sort of stuff. Plus, I think we're going to take a little run up to a kind of a unique area on uh, Lake Simcoe. It's called Lagoon City. I've been there by motorcycle and I've been there by sea dew once before, although I didn't film anything when I was there. This is kind of a neat area. I don't know how far it is from here, maybe 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers, something like that. Maybe not even that. But it's a really neat area of all this uh, mix of residential homes, condos, townhouses, and they're all on little lagoons. It's an inlet that goes in, everybody's connected to Lake Simcoe. All the houses and homes in there are on this French work of, uh, of lagoons, and everybody's got a slip on a dock. So we're gonna go up and have a look at that. I'll just show you around uh, what they call Lagoon City, something kind of uh, different and unusual in Ontario. I think you see this a lot in coastal areas like Florida and stuff. 
but uh, up here in Canada, this is a little bit different. So that's the plan. We're going to take a run up there and uh, show you what that looks like. Lagoon City. Everything seems to be okay. The sun is out. It's about, if you're wondering about the temperature, I don't know, it's probably 15, supposed to get to 23 Celsius today. And winds are supposed to be pretty light. So that's good news. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, we better slow down through here. We're in the harbor now of Beaverton. I'll just take a cruise up through here and have a look around, see what's going on. I don't know if you guys have noticed, I'm sure you have, but because of COVID and because of a lack of supply of everything recreational, God, the price of boats has just gone through the ceiling. When you see what some people are asking for, for boats, online through various you know selling forums online it's just unbelievable people are actually buying sedus that are brand new getting them delivered and then posting them to resell them because they can make a couple thousand dollars more than what it is brand new just because there's a shortage of supply so i guess if you can take advantage of it why not won't last forever though Eventually things will come back to normal. Bugs haven't been too bad. They're definitely out. The gnats are around, so when you're zipping across the lake, when you're out in the open water, it's not as bad. When you get in closer here, yeah, they start pelting you in the face and stuff like that. So keep your mouth shut when you're driving. goes one. The other guys are right there. Oh, yep, they don't like that. Yeah, some type of vulture. Not sure. One up there, one over here. There they are. All right, so that's Beaverton. Let's head up the lake a little ways, a little further north on the uh, eastern shoreline of Lake Simcoe. Head towards Lagoon City. I think it's going to be lunchtime pretty soon as well. I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. The cooler is packed. It's got a fair amount of food in there. I've got a couple of drinks, some sandwiches, banana, pepperonis. We're all set. Wow, look at this. This is actually a bit of a rarity on Lake Simcoe. Sandy beach and no cottages behind it. There's a whole area around here. This is just before the Trent Canal where you head into the Trent Canal waterway system for those of you who live in the area and know that. This is on the shoreline, Sandy Beach. You can have a little picnic right there. Yeah, mostly around all this, this lake there's on the shoreline cottages all the way around. There aren't too too, too many places where it's just wide open. This is one of them. It's kind of pretty. There we go. Get off for a few minutes, get our feet wet, maybe get the drone in there. Okay, let's let it uh, lock onto a bunch of satellites. It's ready to go, controller's ready to go, SeaDo is there. Let's see if we can do this.
Okay, I think this is gonna be a pretty good spot for lunch. I got a little bit of a private beach here. I got a log to sit on if I want, or I could sit on the sea -Doo. The sun is coming out a little bit more now. It's getting a little bit warmer, at least the air temperature is. Even the water on the feet is feeling a little bit warmer now, but that's probably because it's just in the shallow and my feet have become used to it too. Hey, there's a bench to sit on right over there. Let's see what we got for lunch. Hopefully the bugs don't get too bad. Oh, we got a sandwich, pull that out. Ham and cheese. We've got some pepperonis, water. We got a Coke, perfect. And what's really nice is to have a little bit of a secluded beach where you can have your lunch. This thing should be okay just sitting right along here. It's no big wave action, it's all fine. Really quite nice out here now. It's warmed up quite a bit since when I left a couple of hours ago. And uh, it's only gonna get a little warmer by this afternoon. Hit about 23 degrees, something like that today. The whole week is looking pretty good here in uh, the area where I live. Just want to take a moment while we're having lunch to say thank you to all the subscribers who uh, joined the, the Yukon Bob YouTube channel over the winter months. I wasn't producing a lot of content. As a matter of fact, I produced almost nothing over the last seven, eight months. But uh, we're back doing sea do videos and some other things here and there. But I think I've had 250 or something like that subscribers over the winter months when no content was being produced. So thanks very much, guys, for helping the channel out and supporting us. and. Uh, and joining so if you think about it hit the subscribe button if you've got any comments i'd read them all always welcome to hear from you so just subscribe and uh make some comments down below if you've got something to, to add to the trip or to, to say about sea dues or just generally being out in ontario and it's uh, always welcome and interesting to hear what you've got to say okay while that's sitting there i'll have my lunch so i'm sitting here having my lunch thinking i'm kind of alone and secluded in the wilderness and you hear it behind me there's a train rolling right behind me. The tracks are right there. You can just kind of see it going by. That's how far away from civilization I really am. That's a little bit too close, and I thought that might be a problem, but we're okay. Just spilled the coke. Trying to do too many things with too many things in your hand is not a good idea. Okay, let's put this away. Take our trash with us. Yeah, that's not good. Now I got a problem. All right, let's go to shore, see if I can't get a remedy for this. That didn't take much, just a little bit of pebbles sucked up in there. It wasn't much. And all of a sudden, the impeller is jammed. It could be, it could be, uh, it could be damaged, which is a long way for me to get back now. I'm going to have to crawl back way down there to get out of here. This could be a problem. Well, I cannot seem to clear it. So I think I've lost forward momentum or reverse. I can only go about this fast. And there's a little bit of vibration. You can hear the sound now. I'm in a little bit of trouble here, I think. And it's way too far for me to get back to where I started from. Remember that little town I was at, Beaverton, just a minute ago? It's not that far away. I'm gonna crawl into there and see if there's anything I can do there. It's just up ahead a ways and see what I can do to, to fix the problem. But I have a feeling I'm not gonna be able to fix this. I'm gonna have to get this out of the water and into a dealer. So that pretty much shoots the day. The first day, folks, hasn't gone all that well. Yukon Bob's got a problem. <laughs> ah, I should have pushed off a little further before I started the engine, but I'm trying to do it all at once with the camera and the Coca-Cola in my hand, and I should have got out a little further before I started things. But it sucked up some rocks. The rocks got into the impeller and uh, the shaft may be gone or something along that line or the blades are bent something's happened with the drive shaft i only have very slight forward propulsion i'm going to crawl back over to beaverton and somehow i'm going to have to figure out how to get this out of the water to see if there's anything i can fix which i don't think there is 
but my truck and trailer are nowhere near where I am now and that's a problem I got to get a ride somehow back over to where I launched from and then come back over to Beaverton and pick up the sea -Doo. okay so much for the first day out on the water I've gone a couple of seasons without a problem but first day of 2021 on the water with Yukon Bob hasn't gone so well Got to head up to that point there and get around the point and then back into Beaverton into the marina. Not sure where I'll tie up here. I'll have to figure that out. I have to ask around a bit. Ah, that's not what I wanted to have happen on my first time out this season. It's my own fault. I should have pushed off a little further, got a little deeper, and then I would have avoided those rocks. And I thought I got away with it because I heard the rocks suck up in there. But then they seemed to, you know, all the sound stopped. I thought that they just fallen out and it had cleared. But no, it had already damaged the shaft or the impeller. Something's gone wrong. And I know from the last time, it was about 500 bucks or so to fix it. Ah, uh, it's all workable, it's all fixable. Beautiful in here now, it's very nice. So my new problem is, is that I've asked a couple of people now, now that I'm here in Beaverton at the marina area, and apparently there are no cabs, there are no taxi services anywhere in this area. So that's a new problem I gotta try to work around, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta head over to the actual marina here, and see if I can talk to somebody in there. Maybe I can pay somebody a certain amount of money or something and they can drive me over. What we've done now is we've made arrangements for somebody here in town who is going to come and pick me up. Uh, the lady who runs the uh, the marina over there, the coffee shop rather, she's got a daughter or something and she's going to come and get me and give me a ride back to where I have to go. And I'm working up a little bit of a sweat right now. <laughs> now it's warm. I'm going to take a lot of the gear with me. It's about a half an hour, 35, 40 minutes to get over there. She'll take me down over there. I'll pick up my vehicle and then I'll bring it back here and pull this out of the water. And that's my solution. I just had to ask around, find somebody, because there are no cabs, no Ubers. That's it. So that's the solution. Somebody's coming to get me. So just as another little adding to the, the story so far today, I'm standing at the marina here and I've, I've got the, the lady who runs the uh, the coffee shop here, phoned her daughter and she's coming to get me and for 50 bucks she's going to take me down. But then all of a sudden this car pulls in and hey, it's Dave and Leslie. Dave I know from curling. So they pulled in, they said, yeah, we're going to go back that way and we'll give you a ride back. So went in, gave her 10 bucks for her inconvenience and her trouble and now I've got a ride back to my vehicle. <laughs> I knew you were doing a posting. <laughs> I have to do the update. That's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I've arrived back at Beaverton, got the trailer here. Just going to back it in and then go get the Sea-Doo, which is just over there, and load it up. And head to the Quinn's Marina, where I bought it from, and see if I can get it fixed. Well, first part of this ordeal for the day is now over. It's loaded, it's out of the water. Let's now get it to the garage. Well, there's a new reality out there, of course, with uh, the COVID situation. I can't even get into Quinn's Marina here to go and talk to anybody. You talk to somebody on a telephone from inside and uh, they've got me booked in. They want me to just drop it right here and leave the sea right here. Somebody will wheel it into the yard. I can't even get anybody to come and have a look at it right now to give me an idea of the extent of the damage. And the bad news about all of this is that it's going to be at least a week and a half before anybody can even look at it. So. Nothing's going to happen this week, and it'll be into next week now before uh, anybody can take a look at it and hopefully get it all fixed by then. So, <sighs> stupid little mistake is going to cost me some of the best weather and time on the water, and that's just the way it is. There's nothing I can do about it. I've solved the problem of getting the Sea-Doo here. It's at the place that I bought it. No preferential service because of that though. So it just means they've got a, a waiting list and I've got to wait. So it's gonna be a week and a half and I already know because I've done this once before, we're looking probably $500, $600 to fix it. So that's the problem. Here it sits. I'll just leave it here and they'll put it in the yard tonight. We've got pretty much everything out of it. We've got the key in it. I guess we're good to go. That's it guys. 
that's all I can tell you. That's another Yukon Bob video. Unfortunately, it'll be the last for a week or two. But we will get back out on the water shortly. Okay, bye for now.